Hey, everybody. This lesson covers CDC standard precautions, which are critical in the prevention of the spread of infectious agents as well as the protection of patients and healthcare workers. First, let's talk about the CDC standard precautions. Standard precautions are a set of infection control practices developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, to reduce the risk of transmission of bloodborne and other pathogens in healthcare settings. They are hand hygiene, use of PPE, respiratory hygiene or cough etiquette, sharp safety, safe injection practices, sterile instruments and devices, and cleaning and disinfecting environmental surfaces. Let's discuss each of these in more depth. Hand hygiene is the most important measure to prevent the spread of infection amongst patients and healthcare workers. Thoroughly washing your hands with soap and water or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer will remove any infectious agents that may be present on your skin. We will discuss proper hand hygiene in a separate lesson. The use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, protects healthcare workers from exposure to or contact with infectious agents. Depending on the level of exposure, various forms of PPE, such as gloves, gowns, and masks, are used. There are many types of PPE used in a healthcare setting, including gloves for procedures involving contact with bodily fluids, gowns to protect the torso and clothing from contamination, masks and respirators to protect against airborne particles and droplets, face shields and goggles for procedures with a risk of splashing or spraying, such as aspirating an abscess. While PPE provides a layer of protection, it is important to understand that there are correct ways to put on or don PPE and correct ways to take off or doff PPE. When donning personal protective equipment, you should perform the following steps. 1. Perform hand hygiene. Always start with clean hands, as this minimizes the risk of contaminating your gown during the donning process. 2. Put on gown. The gown serves as a barrier to protect your torso and clothing from potential splashes, sprays, or splatters of bodily fluids. Hold the gown away from your body to prevent any existing contaminants on your clothing or skin from coming into contact with the gown. Unfold it and slide your arms into the sleeves. Fasten the gown at the back and neck so it will stay in place during the procedure, providing consistent protection. 3. Put on mask or respirator. A mask or respirator serves as a barrier to protect your respiratory system from any potentially infectious agents. Secure the ties at the middle of your head and neck or secure the elastic bands around your ears. Fit the flexible band to your nose bridge and ensure the mask or respirator is fit snugly to your face and below your chin. If you're wearing an N95 respirator, fit check your respirator. 4. Put on goggles or face shield. Goggles and face shields protect your eyes and mucous membranes from contamination during a procedure. Place the goggles or face shield over your face and eyes and adjust to fit. 5. Put on gloves. Gloves are vital for procedures involving potential contact with body fluids, blood, mucous membranes, or non-intact skin. Pull the glove up and over the gown's cuffs. This ensures a continuous barrier of protection by sealing the gap between the glove and the gown, minimizing the risk of exposure to infectious agents. When doffing or removing PPE, you should follow this procedure. 1. Remove gloves. Removing gloves properly prevents the contamination of your hands as well as the spread of infectious agents. Using a gloved hand, pinch the outside of the palm area of the other glove, peel it off, and hold it in the other gloved hand. Slide the fingers of the ungloved hand under the remaining glove at the wrist and peel it off so that it goes over the first glove. This technique contains the contaminated portions of the gloves within each other, minimizing the risk of contamination. Discard the gloves in a waste container. 2. Remove goggles or face shield. The outside of the goggles or face shield are considered contaminated. Carefully remove the goggles or face shield from the back by lifting the headband or earpieces. If the item is reusable, place in the designated receptacle for reprocessing, otherwise discarded in a waste container. 3. Remove gown. The outside of the gown is considered to be contaminated. Untie the gown. Then, touching only the inside, turn it inside out and fold it into a bundle. The inside of the gown is considered to be the least contaminated part, and by only touching the inside, you reduce the chance of transferring infectious agents to yourself or others then dispose of the gown in a designated container. 4. Remove mask or respirator. Again, the front of the mask or respirator is contaminated, so it is essential that you do not touch it with your ungloved hands. Grasp the bottom ties or elastics of the mask or respirator, then the ones at the top, and remove it without touching the front. 
discard in a waste container. 5. Perform hand hygiene. You should perform hand hygiene immediately after removing PPE and preferably after each step. If your hands become visibly contaminated with body fluids during the process of removing PPE, wash your hands before continuing to remove PPE. It is important to always follow proper protocol when donning and doffing PPE. Improper donning and doffing can result in self-contamination, potentially leading to healthcare-acquired infections, or HAIs. Respiratory hygiene, or cough etiquette, are infection prevention measures designed to limit the transmission of respiratory pathogens that are spread by droplet or airborne routes. Respiratory hygiene involves covering the mouth and nose during coughing or sneezing, washing your hands after touching your mouth or nose, and wearing a surgical mask if needed. When using or working around sharps, healthcare workers should take precautions during procedures, during cleanup, and during disposal. Engineering and work practice controls are the primary methods to reduce the risk of exposure from sharps, instruments, and needles. Engineering controls are any equipment which remove or isolate a hazard in the workplace, like sharps containers and safety needles. Engineering controls are frequently technology-based, such as self-sheathing anesthetic needles, safety scalpels, and needleless IV ports. When engineering controls are not available, work practice controls should be used. These controls are behavior-based. Work practice controls reduce the risk of exposure by changing the way a healthcare worker performs a task. Using instruments instead of fingers for tissue retraction, or palpation during suturing and administration of anesthesia, or not passing a syringe with an unsheathed needle by hand. Sharps should be discarded immediately after use, and healthcare workers should avoid recapping needles whenever possible. Safe injection practices are intended to prevent transmission of infectious diseases between patients as well as between a patient and a healthcare worker. These practices are a set of measures all healthcare workers should follow to perform injections in the safest possible manner. These practices include preparing injections using aseptic technique in a clean area, disinfecting the rubber septum of a medication vial with alcohol before piercing, using one needle for one patient per injection, including manufactured pre-filled syringes or insulin pens and single-dose vials. Another way of saying this is that needles should never be used for more than one patient, and the same needle should not be reused on the same patient for multiple entries into vials or IV systems, as this could introduce contamination. It is important to distinguish between cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization. Cleaning removes contaminants, such as dust, soil, dirt, or microorganisms. Disinfection kills most microorganisms except high numbers of bacterial spores, and sterilization kills all microorganisms. Healthcare facilities have clean and soiled areas for reprocessing on non-critical patient care equipment. It is important to move from clean areas to dirty areas while cleaning in order to prevent bringing contaminants into a clean area. Different equipment requires different levels of disinfection. For example, equipment that requires low-level disinfection or just cleaning are blood pressure cuffs, stethoscopes, electrocardiogram leads, and environmental surfaces, including the OR table. Equipment that requires high-level disinfection by heat or chemicals are respiratory therapy and anesthetic equipment, flexible endoscopes, vaginal specula, reusable bedpans and urinals or urine bottles, and patient bowls, etc. Equipment that requires sterilization either by heat if the equipment is heat-stable or by chemical if the equipment is heat-sensitive are surgical instruments, implants, prostheses and devices, urinary catheters, cardiac catheters, needles and syringes, dressing, sutures, delivery sets, dental instruments, rigid bronchoscopes, cystoscopies, etc. It's important to understand these guidelines as they not only protect healthcare workers but also minimize the risk of spreading infections among patients. Non-adherence could lead to outbreaks like MRSA or even life-threatening conditions like sepsis. In summary, understanding the CDC standard precautions and applying them in your practice ensures the safety of every single person who walks through the doors of your healthcare facility.